this evening, we welcome Judge Carol. Carol Munnings, a world-class attorney, former judge, and current boss of justice with Judge Carol. It's a ZNS primetime favorite. Judge Carol, welcome to Access Now. Happy to have you here with us. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a pleasure to have you, as always. I tell you what, though, what is power of attorney? That's one of the questions everybody always wants to ask, answer. Right. So a power of attorney is a legal document that allows one person uh, you as the donor to give authority to another person to execute documents basically on your behalf. Now, once you say that, uh, does the person have to be a relative? How is that actually decided? How, how, is the, how, do they person, how do they choose the person? So there are certain formalities for creating a power of attorney. Uh, the first thing is that um, the person who is giving the power uh, to another person, they have to be mentally competent. Uh, the document has to be in writing, um, but then you can give it to anyone that you want to give it to mm. once you've complied with the formalities. Are there different types uh, in terms of power of attorney? Are there different types of that? Well, there are actually two types of power of attorney. There's a regular power of attorney, and um, there is what is called an enduring power of attorney. So uh, in both instances, the person who is giving the power, who is called the donor, they have to be mentally competent at the time that the um, power of attorney is executed. Mm. Now, um, an important thing to note with powers of attorney, whether it's a regular or a, an enduring, as I said, the person has to be mentally competent at the time that they're signing. However, the distinction is with an enduring power of attorney, it kicks in once the person who is giving it um, loses their mental capacity. Wow, well, we're seeing something similar to that in the news these days, but if a family member finds that the title holders, let's say they're abusing their, their power, his or her power, what then is the, is the course of action they can be, that can be taken? Right, so in that instance, the law provides that a person who has a power of attorney must act in good faith. And um, if you are found as the donee of the power not to have acted in good faith, you can be liable. So there are, there are checks and balances that are built in in the Power of Attorney Act that allows persons, family members, or others who are concerned that the power has been abused to take action. And it's not sufficient to say that, well, oh, I thought that they, I was doing what they wanted me to do, because it's an objective test, which means that you have to prove in all of the circumstances that this person was actually mentally competent when they gave you the power and that you were acting within the provisions of what the power of attorney provided. Wow, that's some really good information. Thank you so much, Judge Carroll, for joining us here on Access tonight. And we do appreciate you taking time. We'll see you on Thank the you. court next week, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, in the courtroom. Yeah, in the courtroom. Not there you the go. Court. Yes, in yes. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you there. Follow us at ZNS Digital on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or X. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us on our website at ZNSBahamas.com.